America's most independent talk show host, Charles Goyette. This is a good time to be an independent, isn't it? I, I mean, don't you, don't you look at these guys now on both sides of the aisle, the Republicans and the Democrats. In the past, you used to be able to decide which party's more delusional at this juncture of history. And right now you look at them and they're both delusional. Hold the phone for a second. We're littering the deserts of Saudi Arabia with a new shipment of American arms and armaments. Thank that you. will be. Who were, those, who were those people that flew those planes into the World Trade Center? What country did they come from? Please, we've got to stand back and get a grip on this foreign policy. The social friction that Joe's talking about is absolutely right. But I'll tell you something, it's going to increase as we continue to reap right. the harvest of the Republican and Democratic economic policies over the next couple of years. Senator Kerry has shown once again how utterly useless he is. <laughs> Maybe it's something about serving in public office. There was a time that he was a brave and outspoken and bold man when he came back from Vietnam and he said, how do you ask a man to be the last person to die for a mistake? In this case, he went on and on and droned while this kid was being wrestled to the floor by five or six cops while the kid got tasered, and he went on and on with his droning answer and reply. Yeah. Look, all of us in the public debate have been in these public talks where somebody asks a question, he goes on too long, he hogs the microphone and stuff, and it's all so easily handled, and Kerry uh. couldn't bestir himself to put an end to it. Mm -hmm. The man has been useless in public well, life. I mean, I don't understand why there should be an uproar over this. We're entering the fifth well, year of a, of a war that has claimed tens of thousands of human lives needlessly Here and, and we uh, we're, we're talking we're talking about about a uh, concert on the steps of the Capitol Mall here, here we what go. is the big never deal miss, Mike it sounds never like you have an, an opinion yeah never miss an opportunity to get a good anti-war message in there right Charles Charles it'll be good to see what the bill will be for a bunch of Birkenstock wearing tie-dye t-shirt hippies sitting around beating their chests about global warming believe me the taxpayer is gonna have to foot the bill for that mess well, no, Trust me. a year and a half ago Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsenmera used Lockheed Martin and defense contractor money to stage a march based out of the Pentagon on 9-11 to support the war in Iraq when 9-11 yeah. really didn't have anything to do with the war on Iraq. This stuff goes on in Washington all the time. He you has bet. the sole virtue of having opposed this elective and needless war uh, before it got underway. I, I will tell you, on the other hand, I don't think he really understands the economic calamity that the Republicans and the Democrats are creating for this country. The only person who does, in my view, understand the war, okay. the national security state, and the economic debacle coming our way is Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. You know, these people sell off a little bit of themselves each time they stick out their hand and they agree to do something for somebody to collect the money. And by the time they're in office, there's nothing left. No wonder they have no core beliefs. Slice by slice by slice, they sell themselves away. Hillary, Hillary Hillary is, is no different. We are faced with a really, really tough challenge of people here that want to expand the war, continue to ruin brand name America, and uh, decapitalize this country. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's time the American people wake up to the whole bunch of them, the R's and the D's alike. I think Obama has given himself too much credit for his uh, opposition to the war. It was very convenient for him to say that he opposed it before he was elected. But since he has been a United States senator, he has fallen right in line on every vote to continue the war, authorize yes. the war. His voting record on the war is identical mm -hmm. to Hillary Clinton's. I don't think people in other parts of the country realize really what we experience. You talked earlier on the show about these cross-border incursions that ran the National Guard troops off down by our southern border. I don't think people realize that Mexico is nothing but a narco-kleptocracy. What you've got going on is the, uh, is the army, the Mexican military, cooperating with the drug cartels and the drug runners in bringing things across the border and then subsequently getting paid off. So the situation is uh, much more uh, militaristic than people realize. About this, we have entertained the discussion on my radio show in Phoenix, Lou, that uh, that this fellow's replacing John Negroponte because Negroponte got in a turf battle about Chain with Cheney over the national intelligence estimate on Iran, and that he wasn't Negroponte right. willing to to cook the books and uh, uh, be complicit in this in cooking the intelligence for a pretext for war in Iran. I'm a little concerned about this whole change. This is a slap in the face at the governing classes. Lou, I finally figured out that it's a class warfare problem. We have, I watched the poll numbers you put out. Democrats, independents, Republicans, none of them want driver's licenses for right. aliens. The governing class wants them. The governing class wants open borders. The governing class you wants to destroy the dollar. The governing class likes $96 yep. a barrel of oil. But, but so finally there's a slap in the face at the
the governing classes yesterday. Instead of a top-down movement, there is a bottom-up movement about Ron Paul. And it astonishes all the, you know, the usual suspects in Washington. Let me tell you something. Uh, the United States of America is entering a period of uh, economic turmoil such as we haven't seen in our lifetimes. And neither Rudy Giuliani nor Hillary Clinton have the vaguest idea that they and their parties authored this, nor do they have a clue as to what to do about it. But Romney, I mean, cut a deal with this little well, well, wait a minute. If, if, that's, if, if 200 years is too much for a guy with 20 p pictures of, uh, of kitty porn, what do you do with the guy across town with 20 pictures of kitty porn who also went to the playground and accosted a kid? The same thing. You give him, two, you give him 250 years? Yeah, I mean, what same. difference does it Look. make? We had a, a flurry of, of uh, inadequate sentences by liberal judges, I'm going to say back in the 70s, and, the, and somebody had walk into a convenience store, shoot a clerk, and get six months. Right. So the citizens were outraged, and we said, that's it. You can't trust the judges to issue the sentences. We've got to have mandatory sentences. She'll probably do the right thing. I think the guy got to do some time. I right, think Mr. So Goyette, too. thanks very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, I remarks. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I tell you, I believed he, him to be very contrite uh, in his appearance yep. on Al Sharpton's show the other day. Yep. It seemed uh, very sincere to me, but this talk radio is the canary in the coal mine that shows that this culture is, is rapidly becoming deprived of the oxygen of decency that, that you talked about. It's a coarsening right. into the society. Well, Lou, first of all, I want to tell you, I watched your show from Washington the other day, and I want you to know that no matter what anybody else says, you're not entirely beyond redemption. So, <laughs> thank, so you know. <laughs> you. Oh, no listen, I, no I, comment I ever made has upset my 97-year-old mother like that one. <laughs> she, she, she was beside herself, but thanks. Yeah, this is Larry wide stance Craig of, of Idaho, <laughs> so who knows what, what, whether what he says is what he actually means. They sentenced him unbelievably to unsupervised probation. Christine, this is a member of Congress. You can't let these guys go unsupervised. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> uh, Christine, he said, he, he told the president, Christine, that he, he was leaving because he wanted to spend more time spying on his family, <laughs> which is what, what it actually was. That's very funny, Charles. Goodling is going to take the Fifth Amendment. I want people to know that this attorney general is torture memo Al, and uh, the Fifth Amendment <laughs> that his aide is going to invoke is the world's first meaningful anti-torture device. I think the irony of the fact that uh, this torture memo Al's aide is going to invoke the, uh, the Fifth Amendment is uh, something that the American people should take note of. If you want to send a signal, you can use email. You can send a diplomat <laughs> if you want to send a signal. This is a very dangerous situation. This is the kind of thing historians look back on 50 years later and wonder, how did this war break out? It's very dangerous, and I, I, I won't rest easy until uh, Scooter Cheney and Scooter Bush have been replaced. I talked to the Minutemen down at the border on my show this morning here in Phoenix. They continue to come across the border illegally and virtually unchecked by the thousands. There is no point in even attempting to solve this problem legislatively until we stop the border flow. Look, you have got a renegade administration here. You have the new exactly. fourth branch of government, the Bunker Cheney branch of government. <laughs> you've got five million, you've got five million White House emails that suddenly disappeared. You've got apparently two standards of justice. The danger to America, though, is that with Scooter Libby on the loose, some, some defense contractor that has profiteered on this war will endow a chair at the American <laughs> Enterprise. Oh, my God. And the, and he'll the, go the ranting and, and raving. Another, the, another couple the of The ranting and raving wars. of the... Kitty, I had Ambassador Joseph Wilson on the show today who yeah. reminded us that, uh, that the special prosecutor, Patrick Fitzgerald, pointed out there remains a cloud over the office of the vice president. We apparently aren't going to get Scooter Libby's testimony to clear up that cloud, so it's going to fall into the laps of Congress they, now. And Americans, just as they turn to their congresspersons on the immigration nobody bill, nobody was charged need, with leaking at CIA to turn agent's name to because Congress it wasn't leaked. To demand that the cloud, the cloud be <laughs> investigated that hangs over the head right, the of cloud. Dick Fourth oh, Branch of Government Cheney. Darth Vader. Wait, Charles, go ahead. Does that make any sense to you? Is that you just know, another assault on an American how, worker? It is an assault on the American worker, but how can you blame them? General Motors' only profitable division last time I looked was their Chinese operation. 
I mean, there, there's something fundamentally wrong here in the United States. I think finally it's right. time we identify the American people instead of the politicians. The American people have decided they want something for nothing, and the politicians have been willing to give, them, give it to them. So I see Hillary Clinton say a couple of months ago, well, she wants to give every newborn American baby bonds. There go another quarter of a million uh, jobs overseas. Somebody says, well, we've got to have, we've got to have uh, paternity leave for dads. There goes another half a million jobs overseas. Everything the politicians give away has a cost but the issue in terms is of wrong. American jobs.